Okay, so it looks like it's up. Just let me know if you can see it. Yeah, Christian. we'll wait. We'll wait for it to catch up. Exactly, and then we'll go, and then we'll go. <laughs> it's, it's loading the video. Oh. And there we go. Are we up? Yep. Fantastic. Up. Okay. Welcome to Critical Gym. Happy Saturday. <laughs> um, I, I have a hangover. Um, and um, it's going to be an interesting one today because I was out very late last night and had a very good time. And um, unfortunately, I'm feeling a bit, a bit creaky. So whether this will make me more grumpy today or not, I don't know. Um, but we'll see how we go. And we'll see what happens. So Critical Gym. This is where we review a map. Normally to review the gameplay of the map and how the map was put together but also talking about different elements of it as well um, and we'll be looking at how the map was built and I'm going to really pick holes in it and um, my guest who joins me will try and redeem the mod for themselves and they'll be uh, arguing my points and telling me why I'm wrong um, to a certain extent so today my guest is uh, Christian Backer who is also known as Anicator who you might know from, uh, from various websites um, he gets around a bit Say hello, Christian. Hello. <laughs> Say hello in a nice way. Uh, hello. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, people call me Chris or Annie or Anicator or whatever. They tell, call me names. Tell us a bit about <laughs> yourself, Chris. Um, well, I'm a game developer in a way, and I make music, I make animations, I make... Well, I try to make Half-Life maps, but I haven't released a lot of them. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I do a lot of things. Cool. Can but you, most of them are centered around the game development stuff. Can you name some of these projects or not? Um, well, what one of them is Insurgency. I work for New World Interactive uh, on the game Insurgency. I'm a programmer there. Um, and some other projects are uh, Estranged Act 1 and Act 2, of course, but that one's not done yet. <laughs> uh, and uh, I did some music for the Stanley Parable. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing music for the Jake and Bacon mod and uh, also for the From Earth mod. Very so, nice. See, guys, music. I don't bring you just anybody. You know what I mean? When I'm bringing out, I'm bringing guests back. These are real people. Anyway, so, <laughs> so <I exist. laughs> he is a real human being. He has skills and feelings. Um, okay, so we are going to be walking through today's spherical nightmares, um, which is um, a you know reasonably recent mod. A couple of years ago, I think, uh, it came out, and um, it was. And I'm desperately scrambling now to find the name of the author, which is terrible because I should have all this stuff in front of me. Um, I'm almost there. Help me. He, he looked it up a second I ago. Know. And he's actually watching it right now. So oh. it's interesting. Um, my Twitter is going strange and not showing me the very last people who uh, commented on things. Anyway, oh, hang on, that's it. David. David Lundvall is, uh, is the author. And um, some of you may remember, and I'm sure you, many of you have played it, Spherical Nightmares got very good reviews. Um, also got some pretty lofty um, attention from... Uh, gaming magazines like PC Gamer uh, ran an article for their mod of the week uh, for Spherical Nightmares when it came out. But I'm not sure if it's as clever as it thinks it is. <laughs> because I'm a pain in the butt. Um, so, what we're going to do is. <laughs> so, what we're going to do is we're going to walk through. Oh, and just as a side point, talking about Chris, uh, who's joined me today, uh, Strange has just been posted up on Planet Phillip. So you might want to go and check it out if you haven't before. It's actually yeah. a mod that's available uh, yeah. as a mod on Steam, so you can just download it. And it's actually you don't need Half-Life 2 installed to play it, right? Yeah, it's not really. It, it's a mod, but it also isn't a mod. It's more standalone. -ish. Well, it started as a mod, didn't it? And then you sort yeah, of yeah, cut, cut the umbilical. It's a mod. Yeah. You didn't need Half-Life 2. So. Okay, but anyway, I recommend going and playing it. There's or else. <laughs> I recommend going and playing it. We might cover it on this podcast at some point in the future mm. I have opinions about estranged <laughs> so, so do I yes <laughs> um, I may invite you back for that um, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if you can have the mod maker themselves come in and have to defend their own work that seems a bit cruel maybe we won't uh, well I don't know I, I, I'd, I'd live 
Okay, so let's get going. So we're going to play through uh, Spherical Nightmares, and um, I've got like a bunch of notes uh, for each section, and I know Christian's got some notes as well. So we'll just be talking through each section and just sort of talking through our observations as we want. Um, so without any further ado, Christian, if you could do me a favour and just monitor the uh, the chat and just see if there's any interesting points that come out there, and you might want to bring back to the conversation if that's okay, because uh, I can't I look at it. I see hearts and Darren and uh, oh. so cute. Uh. Okay, so let's get moving. So, I mean, obviously, overall with Spherical Nightmares, I think one thing that people really liked was the overall, um, the, the smart way uh, of the ideas that were involved in it with regards to the, uh, the sort of a testing um, element of it as if you were running through a maze or something like that. And um, to be honest, I, I didn't pick up on that very much, which is terrible. Chris did, but I didn't. Um, you got to use your eyes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, but I think one of the things I've I've always liked about it is the storytelling element and um, the fact that it's slightly ambiguous. It's, it doesn't really spell it out for you as to what's going on. So it's up to you to really put it together, and it's ambiguous enough for you to be able to put your own interpretation onto it, right? Christian, mm, stealing my lines. Right? Oh, I did. Sorry. Go on. <laughs> like a moment ago, you didn't say it. <laughs> no, I. Yeah. Didn't. Well, I, I think I think we'll we'll get to that a bit later as well when we see more of the uh, actual structure reveal. Because right now, you know, in the story, we don't really know much about it at all. Mm -hmm. so. Let's get moving. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, my notes on this first section as we're moving through. Um, uh, I think I think I said boxy, but anyway, apart from that. Um, Straight off, we've got a weapon gate, which is fine. So you know, need the crowbar um, to get through this uh, the, these few boards here. Um, mm -hmm. And weapon gates are always a great thing um, if you can put them in in an interesting way. Then you know, fantastic. Um, this, unfortunately, well, to me, it's just very easy to find the crowbar. It's right there. You know, there yeah. wasn't much of a game involved there at all. I, I, I do think it's good that he put the light there. Yeah, it definitely, lights. it really draws but, you in. But, but I do, I don't know if weapon gates are always the best thing because, you know, why well, not one gun? one thing that's interesting for me is that whenever I I watch people play test my maps, they don't mm -hmm. check the weapons that they have when they start the game. So they've got the well, grav gun and they're running around hitting everything with the crowbar and they don't even know they've got the grav gun there, you know? Well, yeah, that's because you didn't give it to me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, so in that respect, you know, it's a good move to sort of leave it on the floor rather than just equip the player at the beginning, right? Yeah. But I've, I've worked many wooden boards before and, you know, then you're just like, oh, more wooden boards to hit with a crowbar. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's my favorite at. thing. It's my favorite but, thing in the world. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'd, I'd rather break it with something else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm um, usually the guy that's like, oh, wooden board, um, uh, I'll, I'll whack him with whatever, you know, yeah. barrels. I want to destroy <laughs> it with new things. <laughs> uh, uh, new and interesting ways to destroy wooden boards. The, mm -hmm. um, the, the interesting thing about the wooden board thing, I talk about this on a few of the videos I'm doing is that you know really all they're doing is slowing your progress down and giving you something to do um, uh, for, for much of it and Valve do a yeah. lot in the official maps mm -hmm. um, but it's sort of it's very Half-Life 2-ish isn't it if you want to yeah. create a Half-Life 2 mod then you know stick some wooden boards across some doorways and people you know fall right in line with that so this yeah, first why can't God. I kick it in with some sort of giant metal object <laughs> and then make it go like, <laughs> and I'll be like, oh yeah. And then a crowbar falls down. You're like, oh, that's what I did. Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, there you go. Um, one of the interesting things about this area, this first area here, it's a lot of false doors um, going on, which I found a little bit annoying, to be honest. You know, I mean, we've got this section here with two false doors. We don't ever get to loop around or get to go inside these areas at all. And it just felt a little bit unnecessary to have quite so many. I think, you know, obviously full stores are quite a good thing in creating a, the feel of a larger world, but you don't need that many of them, surely. Well, um, I, I, I think he tackled it quite cleverly because the ones you can't enter do not have handles on them. This is true. They are no, they are signposted perfectly so well. Yeah, so you um, know that they are not important, and 
that that like when you're exploring, there are areas that you loop around to, mm -hmm. and um, I think you know. Uh, like dre dressing up a scene like that, I don't think there's anything really wrong with it because you can, you, you just get to explore the world and sort of, you know, get a feel of the place. Mm hmm. Fair enough. And so it, it, it doesn't, like, the goal is to sort of immerse you in the world and not so much give you a gameplay, um, you know, like, like some sort of objective. Like oh, I gotta get to the other side of this door. Mm -hmm. No, this is just a door. Um, I mean, perhaps like the only thing he could have changed is that the the doors you do loop around, that they maybe do have sort of like handles on them, to imply like this one will open one day. <laughs> you will be able to get back around there again. Yeah, interesting. But, but it's 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 a bit nitpicky. Yeah, true. Um, I guess. You know, corridors and rooms have doors, and you can't really argue with that. Um, but um, I've seen some mods. There was one a little while ago. I can't remember what it was that had um, just a huge amount of fake doors everywhere, and you were continually just trying to work out which was the door that had a goddamn handle on it. You know, and there were like kind of fifty doors in it. I can't remember which one it was. Which one it was? It might have been part of one of the competition maps. It was like out in the street or something. Um, Incidentally, on my second playthrough this morning, I actually discovered this vent for the first time. Um, I couldn't work out why we would have the top floor up there, because there's actually an additional floor put above, and the only reason for it is to be able to find that vent and drop back down again. Mm -hmm. Which seems overkill to me, but fair enough. Whatever you, you know, it's your mod. Do what you want. Yeah. If you want it in your map, then put it in your map. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, th th there was, there's an, uh, like a little gripe I have with it, though, which is... Um, like that, that, at some point, there's also a spot where uh, I don't know. Let's see. Did you get the gravity gun yet? And all uh, that? Not yet. I'm just at the puzzle there. Yeah. Okay. So, so when you get the gravity gun, there's uh, uh, you, you will arrive at a door, and then we'll yeah. have wooden boards. Yeah. And you're holding a gravity gun, and you get to switch to the crowbar again. <laughs> it doesn't listen to your gravity gun. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of the something fishy posters? Uh, oh, I didn't see those actually. There's a load of custom posters all over the mod, and actually, it's quite funny. Yeah, I, I did see some of the posters. I uh, saw like a, a couple. And there's the custom uh, coverings for the, uh, the the soda machines as well. But what I like is that I mean, I don't know if that was his intention with the something fishy, but obviously there's something going on here. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is not a normal place. This is not a normal scenario that's happening here. Something fishy's going. On. <laughs> you see what something I mean? Fishy. <laughs> So yeah, I, I remember there being coffee posters. Oh, and here, here I just found one. Yeah, <laughs> like just another yeah. poster. That's so silly. Okay, so um, just got to the the puzzle in uh, to find the data card to go into the uh, to get hold of the grav gun. Mm -hmm. um, I personally found this a little bit weak. Um, it's literally just round the corner and on the table. It's like, oh, okay. Well, I didn't really have to work very hard for that. Um, and I think, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to find a good spot for those. That's so. true. There's um, the one thing I would say is that it's very well signposted. It's very, very clear what it is you have to do, right? Um, it's very, you know, he's he's done three of them. It's very, very well laid out as a puzzle. Here, here is the missing piece. Go find it. Um, I just probably would have liked it to have been a bit more interesting to go and actually find the piece itself. I, I was actually confused by the puzzle initially because, oh, really? uh, like, I I I, I did. So I think I did see the card and stuff. Mm. So I was looking for a card, but I expected I had to find another card. Because, because there's, there's an empty one at the end. end. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I, I, I didn't look inside that one. <laughs> <laughs> I was just expecting. But, but yeah, so. It's well, I mean, I think essentially he's signposting saying something can either be here or not be here. But I guess he kind of manages that with the first two, so there's really no need for the third one. It is misleading. Yeah. I mean, the, the, it, it's, it's fine. It's just something I didn't see. Mm. <laughs> it's not like a problem. What I also. Do you know what really got me as well? Um, in this section, just further up, when you get to the, the end and there's the doorway and it's locked and you have to punt the, uh, the cabinet out. I was stuck in this area completely for ages when I first played this. I was like, I couldn't work out how to get out of the area. Um, yeah. And over on the right hand, over on the left hand side, you've got this room with a cage, and it's got a blue ball inside it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know, I'm thinking this blue ball is important. This blue ball here is some kind of puzzle or some kind of but thing. Who, that who told you that? Nothing. I just, I just. It, it, here's a blue ball on the floor that I can pick up th with the grav gun. <laughs> it's not a, it's not a regular. Uh, you know, 
It's not a regular yeah. object in, in Half-Life 2 world, therefore it must be important, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and what I'm trying to work out is, is it important? Is there something here? Is there some kind of puzzle that's involved in trying to punt this blue ball through the hole in the wall? What if, what if the ball is an illusion? <laughs> Um, what if I'm just jumping through hoops for these people what, right now? What if you're not actually streaming right now? <laughs> um, shut up. Uh, <laughs> the, um, Jim, I can't hear you. Where are you? <laughs> no, no, shut up. Uh, the, um, the next section, um, I've just punt so I've just punted the cabinet out of the way, and that really threw me for a while. I couldn't get that. But anyway, it's simple as hell, but just tripped me up. But it's not necessarily a bad puzzle. I quite like it. Mm-hmm. It's not even yeah, a puzzle, I, it's I just a really thing, isn't it? Yeah, I not trouble with it. No, it's just me, because I'm dumb. Um, uh, just, no, at some point you just get aggressive and you start punching everything. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's, it's what I call the, um, you know, the, the crowbar wall frenzy fail, right? <laughs> Which basically means, you know, when you're watching playtesting, the minute the player starts hitting, the, hitting all the walls with a the crowbar, then you know you've failed absolutely miserably at a puzzle area. Um, mm -hmm. That's pure desperation going on right there. Okay, so then we get we move through and we head into the uh, there's a big hole in the floor and we drop through into a, a sort of a strange grotto-y kind of area. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what's interesting as well is with this mod is that what we encounter is lots of different, really very random areas connected together in almost like a sort of a a dream-like fashion, if you like. In areas that shouldn't be connected are somehow connected, right? Mm -hmm. And obviously. At the end of all of this, we we are kind of you're given the hint that this is some kind of testing thing that you've been through, or some kind of. You're, you're actually given the hint ahead of time. I just noticed. <laughs> please, please tell me how. Well, well, you'll get to an area in a bit where you can, you know, look outside for a bit and all that stuff. And yes. in that area, you'll find a clipboard on the floor. Ah, very cool. See, these things are great, and it is these these little details that make it great in its own way. Um, it's just the level design that I had an issue with. Anyway, but the interesting question is, and David can answer this, and I don't know if he's watching right now. I, see, I think he said he wanted to watch. Well, he, he is in the chat. Okay, there you go. So David can answer the question. Is Was this uh, the design process of the mod is what I'm trying to work out. So did David just basically build a whole bunch of ra a bunch of areas of different types of gameplay, connect them together, and then come up with the concept afterwards for you know how to tie it all together and give it some kind of concept or was it there it yes it does because um it's just an interesting i mean obviously is is the the concept of the story just an excuse for a way of throwing together lots of different areas without having a sort of a real reason why these areas would be connected or together and that's why it's important that does it fit the Jim Partridge philosophy? No. Oh, okay. See, this is much better than having Darren, because Darren, <laughs> me, Darren, and me agree on so many things, and I, I love Darren to pieces. But that's not. The point. Yeah, I mean, because because that's <laughs> the, like the, this is totally your way of making maps, you know. No, not at all. I mean, I think it's a question. What I'm, yeah. I'm I want to know, you know mm -hmm. people's thoughts on this. You know, mm -hmm. what's the? There are many different ways to come to a final solution, right? A final mm -hmm. concept. Um, what, what, what would your responses be, like if he, because like, if he uh, doesn't respond at all, because you're, you're <laughs> using the fact that he's here. Not at so, all. I'm, I'm interested. You know, if he's there and willing to talk about it, that's fine. But um, yeah, yeah. But what, what would your conclusions be based on the answer? Okay. So my conclusion is that uh, I believe and I think that David built a lot of these areas and then connected and then came up with the idea of how to connect them all together. Mm -hmm. As in a bunch yeah, of, sort of what, what if he did? Maps. What, what would your response be in that case? Um, I don't know. It's just interesting. That's why I'm asking. It's not. That I'm not saying that there's a right way or a wrong way. I'm saying that there is. It's just an interesting idea to find out what the process was. Okay. Yeah, but then comes that that of course begs the question again, where I just say, does it matter? <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, <laughs> so, but why does it matter? Because then you do have a reason. Um, that and you do have a different response to the other answer when okay. you know if he did it with an intention or if he did it afterwards you know like yeah well I mean from a from a gameplay perspective I think it makes a difference okay because um, how areas are built and how areas are put together and that kind of thing um, mm -hmm. affects the gameplay of the game itself the story is a different thing completely okay mm -hmm. um, but from a gameplay perspective I'm interested because the flow of the gameplay is something that I've kind of picked up on and you know there's 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 elements there that I want to talk about 
as in mm. the, the order in which the areas appear and that kind of thing. I just realised I'm not really looking at my uh, not really looking at my notes. Um, well, that doesn't matter. No, that's yeah. okay. I'm just trying to see. I don't want to miss any of the points that I picked up on before. So I'm in the bathroom. I'm right. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I mean, one thing that I did think about the um, the offices and the and, and that kind of thing. It felt very Half Life One to me. You know, a lot of the office space and the look and feel of the office spaces. Uh, yeah, I think it's the texture. <laughs> yeah, no, it is, it's definitely. But, I mean, it wasn't necessarily a bad thing. It was just an interesting observation that, you know, mm -hmm. it feels like I'm actually in the office areas of Half-Life 1. Anyway. I'm ah. going to have it front. So now we're heading into the... Uh, yeah, so now we're heading into... Oh, actually, you said about the clipboard. Sc scan the floor for clipboard. Yes, so I'm, I forgot to go outside. I've now, I'm now well, in black. You don't, to, you don't have to go outside. It's just in that rough ah, area. Ah, okay. So I am. Um, going, going outside is good though for story <laughs> acquisition yes. or backstory. So I've now you backwards. I have just gone black and white because oh, I'm in flashback well, mode. <laughs> I'm like cold right now. Hold on a second. That's <laughs> all right. I'll keep going. So um, I'm trying to look for this clipboard because I'm interested now. I seem to remember I probably picked it up but didn't even look at it last time. Yeah, well, the, I, I I think I looked at it the first time I played but forgot about it the second time. <laughs> gotcha. But now I look at it again, I'm like, oh, this spoils everything. <laughs> <laughs> so the, um, I can't find the, the, the clipboard, help me out. Is it past the flashback? Uh, well, it's, it's, I think it's pretty much when you, you enter this area, you go, get, go from the test room with the green walls. Yeah. Uh, you arrive here, uh, or whatever. And then it's on the floor, and it says the playground, global and local area. Even says Black Mesa on it. Ooh. Oh, really? Is this the the playground area you're talking about, or not? No, 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 no. I'm talking. The note says it on it. The clipboard says it on it. Yeah. And um, what what else? Uh, it, it it like specifies that subject one, Gordon Freeman. Response excellent. Pattern repeated. Ah, uh, very nice. Oh, very and good. David's on it too. The what? Sorry. It's response was good and his pattern was three <laughs> <laughs> that, no everyone was like fuck, fuck that guy. oh, uh, oops, oops, oh yeah oops, whoops sorry we have whoops. been we have had words before we began uh, about 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 christian swearing so yeah, um, i'm i'm trying <laughs> i'm very bad at this this is a family podcast okay I, yes i i'm the grumpy uncle <laughs> <laughs> no i'm the grumpy one you're uh, the friendly, nice person, remember? Anyway. No, I'm, I'm, I'm the aunt. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. So anyway heading, uh, heading down what? into the playground is where I am now. Now, what, now obviously, um, I think, if I remember rightly, Darren made a comment about the fact that there were so... Uh, there were so there was quite a long intro before you actually reach any kind of gameplay. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it was... Uh, you know, it, it was just interesting that, that you go through all of these areas to reach this point. And I mean, I think from a story perspective, if you're paying attention, then I think there's a lot to see there. Mm -hmm. And there's, quite, there's there's plenty of stuff going on. And I think just from a Half-Life 2 mod perspective, we're quite used to, you know, getting into the action relatively quickly. Yeah. Um, but when you consider... Sorry, go on. No, go for it. Sorry. Oh, that's my least favorite part of Half-Life. <laughs> it doesn't know how to sit still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like stop moving, and then <laughs> just like, hey, look, it's more music and pew pew. pew. <laughs> and it's like, I was just thinking about Breen, man. <laughs> oh, look, there's the uh, I've just seen the G-Man, which I would actually never spotted before. There's a G-Man yeah, just above the playground. Yeah, I probably should pay more attention. Mm. Um, the seesaws don't work in the playground, which thoroughly, thoroughly upset me. Um, but there you go. What if they are frozen in time. <laughs> it's all in the loop. Yes, and neither does the roundabout. Terrible. <laughs> anyway, although I did actually, when I played this last time, I managed to kill myself with the tire, the swing, the tire swing. So let's see if we can do this again. Uh, yeah, that's called Raven oh! Syndrome. Yeah, seriously, smacked I, myself in the back of the head. Yeah, I did that in Raven Home pretty often. <laughs> I should also, I, I don't know, should I reveal to everyone that Raven Home is not my favorite level in Half Life? Really. Yeah, lots, you're not alone. Place. There's actually quite a lot of people. When Ravenholmville happened, there was quite a lot of people going, mm, I don't really like Ravenholm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like the most boring place ever. <laughs> it's it's. I thought it was wonderful, but um, <laughs> but what I liked about it was that it really just took you out of the whole game and put you into a, to a different game for yeah, you know that's a few the levels. Problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Half Life this anymore. Is half -life. Yeah, this is, you know, it's it's fun. You know, it tries some things that are cool, but it tries them 
like throughout the entirety of Ravenholm. Yeah. It's it's all like, hey, look, here's all the physics puzzles. This is was our playground for havoc and mm. stuff. Mm. E even in some of the old beta releases, you can find Ravenholm being the place where they put all the physics magic. Yeah, that's true. Uh, they don't do it anywhere else, so it it kind of you know goes against their philosophy of you know introducing the player to something and then, and then building on it, getting them accustomed to it, and then you know twisting it. Yeah. that stuff in there but yeah. what, what they usually do uh, well that's usually what they do but in Ravenholm it's just Ravenholm that does that and afterwards it's like yeah I could do that but I've got guns <laughs> exactly I don't know I, anyway let's move on because we've got a lot to cover and, and there's many interesting things to talk about so uh, I'm going to drop through the grate and down into the area with the uh, with the, uh, the, 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 the the zombie the, the zombine what, what zombie what so, are you talking about? So when you drop out, when I'm you drop out of the playground, you reach this. And just to explain to anyone who wasn't here last time, um, Christian can't see what I'm doing, um, so he has to try to guess where I am in the mob because there's a I, twenty I, twenty I can, odd second delay. I can delay. see it. I can see it thirty seconds late. <laughs> um, so I mean, I think a zombie as the first thing that you throw at the player is a bit mean. That's a bit of a heavy bag <laughs> to throw at the player when you've really got very little space to manoeuvre, um, and. Um, and really your only option is obviously to grab the barrel and, and, and try and kill it before it, it kills you. Um, I Yeah, I usually close the door and then get, catch my breath. Yeah. That's, that's what I do. I'm just like, oh, door. You know, <laughs> it, it's all my, always my solution with zombies. It's just like, is there a door nearby? Okay, <laughs> that will cool. calm them down. That's a really good point for like level designers. Is You know, you want to use zombies, don't put a door nearby. <laughs> Well, um, I I would because I, I I give the player like I would give them that kind of comfort. I would, <laughs> you know, I, it's for the smart players. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so then we're moving through to the sewer area uh, once we get through that section, or th just through that bit. And there's a vent almost directly in front of you when you come out of the door, and it's got some physics props in front of it hiding it. Um, the one thing I would say about that is that the physics props jump out at you because there aren't any other physics props anywhere on the in the area. So why are these physics props here? You know, um, if you want to kind of hide a section or you know get like put a secret in or whatever, it's probably best to sort of mix it up a bit and give the player plenty of options to go and explore rather than just putting a physics prop in front of a vent. You know, but why make it hard? Because the reward is is searching. It's a reward for exploration, right? You searched I'll, and you I'll, found. I'll tell you now, I didn't know about this spot. I just went there. Ah, uh, really? Yes. It's a good mod in that respect. It's got a lot of, you know, nice little bits and pieces like this. I do, um, I do know about one further along. Cool. Well, maybe I, maybe I don't. Yeah. Mm. Hopefully. Okay. <laughs> so in that respect, big thumbs up. Lots of nice little, you know, extras and add-ons. I don't, you know, I'm not going to be mean about everything. Mm. If something's good, I'm going to say it's good. Um... Okay. Integrity here, guys. Uh, hang on a second. Getting a lot of freezes at the moment. Interesting. So uh, my internet in London is terrible, which you wouldn't believe in the, one of the largest capital cities in the world. Um, that the internet here is very, very poor. Um, hopefully the quality will pick up again. Um, we could stop and start again. Um, Philip, let us know what you think we should do. It's your mm. channel. We're here for you. <laughs> I'll massage your back. Only once. <laughs> Next time you have to pay. Yeah, I really do. Up I, I need to pay more for my internet. And maybe we'll be in a better <laughs> situation to do this kind of thing. When I agreed to start doing this with Philip, I didn't really think about that. So yeah, oh. sure, it sounds great. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> I'll I'll do a stream and uh, I'll get my computer set up. We got a DTX uh, 970. Uh. <laughs> um. So the pipe puzzles in the sewer, I quite like them. I think the pipes are wide enough that it's pretty obvious what you what's going on, that they're a, an actually a walkable surface. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that they're actually custom, the pipes. Um, and uh, I think they are anyway. Um, but, I yeah. They are retextured. Ah, OK. Yeah. But, no, certainly it's a, you know, they really jump out and, and once again. So I think puzzle-wise, David's on a winner. He's doing quite well puzzle-wise. Um, and the fact that you need the run-up to uh, to be able to do the uh, the pipe jumps and that kind of thing, it's it's quite an interesting um, yeah. way of doing it. S some of them could use you know a little more 
work in a in a way that some of them are a bit too crowd jumpy. Yes, that's true. But I think that was kind of the point, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's just an accident. That well, like, it's not it's often good. really that the crouch jump comes into play as an actual gameplay mechanic in 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 mods, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, because it's shit. <laughs> And once again, he's swearing. Um, oh, so I meant to say that. We, I, I don't, I don't we really can, consider. I don't I really know. consider that word to be. Swearing. We can say crap. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, but that's the same word. What's the difference? I don't know. <laughs> one, you, one, you, one, you can say on The Simpsons. The other one, you can't. There you go. Yeah, but we're not in America. <laughs> anyway, um, let's not get hung up on it. So. Um, what have I done? Right, okay, so we jumped off uh, some of the pipes and now we're kind of at the end of the sewer section we've moved back into another underground area. One of my criticisms actually of the mod was generally, it's a bit grey, you know? It's a bit, the, I mean obviously the palette of the Half-Life 2 texture set is very grey, um, but um, yeah, this mod does tend to suffer a little bit from concrete, you know, concrete overload. Yeah, but concrete is so beautiful. <laughs> um, I, I, w I was working on a map for combination bill, which mm. I didn't release. Um, Shame on you. But I, but I, I am working on stuff. Um, mm. And you know, I, I had like the the like this sort of overcast light from um, the sun coming in through the clouds, mm -hmm. through windows, bouncing back up against concrete, and it looked awesome. <laughs> you know. Did it play any good, or was it terrible? Hmm. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's 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 a wonderful map. It's uh, gonna be uh, the best map ever. <laughs> so oh, yeah, one thing I noticed when we picked up the shotgun a minute ago was the fact that it's not weapon gated, so you could quite easily miss the shotgun. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Um, I'm sure there's a bad guy with it later on. You can pick, drop pick it off from. But, oh, there is actually. I know there is. Um, because I don't. Well, like, yeah, they, I, they are not nice guys. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't like where he is. So I know he's definitely there. But um, the. Uh, yeah, and I guess we're now in our sort of third or fourth vent, and so I think it's been raised many times before. This 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 mod is on vent overload. Um, every single area seems to be connected by vents, and that kind of picks up on my point that I think what we've got is a whole bunch of sort of disparate different gaming areas that were possibly built pre half hand and that are just connected by the vents. I think they were put there especially for uh, you, you know, like for me personally. Yeah, because oh. they would allow you to vent. Ah, very nice. Mm. Please don't do jokes like that again. Mm. Um, <laughs> mm. So um, we're back. More, okay. Yeah. So I'm back into the sewers again, having uh, just been through uh, a few extra rooms, a few more grey concrete rooms. Um, back into the sewers again with another version of the jumping crouch jump pipe puzzle. So actually, I've just moved into map three. I think. Do you know where I am? Um, yeah, I can, see, I can see it on the stream. <laughs> ah, okay, there you go. Um, so, I'm not going to get hung up on it, but are you seeing that stream being pretty jerky at your end or not? No, it's fine. I think it's just filler. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and then we're moving into another room, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of the same detailing going on as well. Now, don't get me wrong, I think visually this mod's fine. You know, I think it does a great job, it's got some great lighting, and... Um, it is grey, but it's done quite well. You know, there's lots of detail and lots of attention being paid to it. Way more than I can be bothered to do in my maps, you know? <laughs> I'm I'm terrible for detailing. Um, and, uh, yeah, really cannot be bothered. So then you come out into this kind of open area with... Um, it's like a, a big concrete kind of rock wall on one side. And, and this is the bit that where you go in and you shoot the, uh, the console to get through. You know, like the, there's a combine console you, you have to shoot. Mm -hmm. You know, this is I, this kind of area really brings back sort of Half Life One to me. I quite like the space; it's a big space, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But nothing happens in it. <laughs> um, I, I don't really understand once again why the space is the shape it is, or why it is, you know. Well, you, you expected to find bad guys. Well, I think for the shape, well, no, not necessarily, but. Um, Oh, I guess actually, if you look up, you can see the tram, and there's a foreshadow of the tram. Maybe I hadn't noticed that before. That's pretty cool. Um, it's just more that it's just a sort of a bit of a surprising space, and I think it, it does lead to expectations in the player that something you know, a bit bigger is going to happen here, or at least maybe this space is sort of a puzzle area. 
but mm. actually it's not anything it's just a, it's just an op a different size space to be in if you see what I mean I've got another pun oh god come on it's it's, it's room for thought ah uh, very nice <laughs> um <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't even get that anyway fine. so let's talk about the combine console shoot it through the great puzzle thing mm -hmm. your thoughts um what white thing why can't I shoot through you the what sorry the the of flux my bullets which okay which is <laughs> yes that's true um but yeah. also shooting combine consoles is not something that comes naturally to Half-Life 2 players it's not something that's in the the dictionary yeah. if you like but it is the only thing here exactly like, so it's Pistol ammo everywhere. And there's a pistol there in case you don't have a pistol. I know, and that—I uh, mean—that's a great thing in the fact that you know he's give, he's making sure that you can't get stuck. Fair enough, you know. Yeah, it's like just do the thing, and we'll get on with it. <laughs> and it is, but, it, but I mean, I think it's an interesting point that for a puzzle area, if the only option you give to the player is is the way to solve the puzzle, then it's not really much of a puzzle. What do you mm. think about that statement? Mm. Oh, am I talking out of my ass? Oh, mm. I can say I can say ass. That's fine. Mm. I'm British. Yeah, sure. You can say everything. <laughs> you're the host. It's your, it's your thing. Go on. Um, what do you think about that? Well, well, I'm I'm thinking. I'm trying to think of other situations where this kind of thing happens, and you know that there's puzzle games out there. Usually, I I don't really see what you mean by you know if the puzzle is the only thing there. Then you know it's still a puzzle. Um, I mean, for example, you shoot you shoot through that grate because it's almost out of desperation. It's almost like I have no idea what else I'm supposed to do. It's ludicrous, but I'll shoot this panel and see what happens. It doesn't make any sense to me, but I'm going to do it anyway. Which is just tantamount to hitting walls with crowbars. Nah, I don't know, because this can make you go oh. Things that can make you go, ah. Oh. Mm. Hmm. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure if that's true. Uh, I disagree, which is the point, right? Um, I think that a puzzle should be something a bit more than that. Um, a puzzle should be uh, sort of connecting various things together, i.e., you know, as he did earlier yeah, with okay. the missing data disk or whatever, that kind of thing, you know, yeah. is okay. Like a sequence. Yeah, or, or see, I mean, there's, there's quite a lot of different ways to do it good puzzle you know there's all sorts of different mechanics that you can use um, mm. but essentially you know mostly with puzzles it's like there's a missing element here you need to somehow work out what that is and put it in place for something to happen that's generally how most puzzles you know you've got A and C go for like sort the B out you know mm -hmm. um, and with that situation I don't think that's really made me think what I had to do it was simply just I was desperate so I shot that thing Ooh, mm. hang on. Right, I'm now moving into that big combat area, the first big combat area. So I'm going to go God mode and cheat um, because I want to look at how the combat areas are constructed. Ooh, it's, the, oh, it's cheats. I should know that by now. <laughs> oh, goad. No, goad isn't a, th a thing. God mode on the goad mode. You goad your enemies. Okay. <laughs> um, so the shotgunner. At the top of the, uh, of the on on the balcony, just by the mounted guns. Are you where Are you where I am? Yeah, I'm. I'm in the same area. Great. Okay. Um, Shooting barrels. Yeah, no, that's. I didn't like him there. And the other the other thing that, that that bothers me about this is that you're not dropped into this combat space. I can go back inside and shut the door if I want to. You know, I'm just gonna ignore all this. Go back inside, shut the door, forget it. You know. <laughs> so you're against player choice. I'm. It's just an interesting point that normally I think good level design drops you into a into an arena like this so that you don't have the option of going back. Mm -hmm. You know, and having this mounted gun um, was an interesting choice. I think it's fine to have you know these kind of mounted guns. Um, the I mean, it runs out of ammo, so you're kind of forced to move on um, and possibly move, forced to move down into the actual play area, but. Um, I don't see the combine doing particularly interesting or clever things here in this combat space. If you see what I mean, mm, yeah, They're very much in sitting duck mode, you know. 
it depends on you know it, it depends on your playstyle I think because like you can sit there all the time but oh absolutely you can also just go out there and just be like hey you well, I mean, I think actually th how I dealt with this the first time was I just sat up on the balcony and I, I, I used my pistol and I sniped, and, you know, and wiped them all out. Mm -hmm. um, which, you know, it's a bit of a shame, really, because you've got quite a, an interesting arena downstairs. But yeah. the player's never in a situation where they're really forced to use it. And actually, once you get down there, if you get down there too early, it's pretty brutal. You can get nailed pretty quickly. Um, yeah. They really close in on you. Um and so there's just something a bit off about it, the balancing of the, of the combat and the area just didn't really, you know, doesn't yeah. really seem to get the best out of the space that's been created. There, there is a lot of stuff though that you can use to make your life a lot easier. If you were to get down early, if you yeah. just make sure you get the barrels quickly, you can take out pretty much all of them and you know, like very quickly. Yeah, I've literally just found this other balcony area over to the right hand side where you can head back up the ladder and find the other mounted gun. I've mm -hmm. never found this before. Uh, that, see, that there's a lot of stuff that helps you out. Yeah, it's interesting. Also, if you get on that mountain gun, I think it spawns more enemies. Ah, does it really? I think you... Th don't you actually have to do this? I don't know. No. It's oh, oh, wait, no. It, it's when you go around the corner, they come. Um, yeah. But if you get on the mountain gun, they come as well. Yeah. Uh, so I think we talked about last, last month with me and Darren when we were talking about Station 51, I think we talked about the pistol and my particular hatred for the pistol. Um because it's essentially a sniper rifle. Eh. Um, I, I, I remember that conversation, but I'm not like... It's not a very precise sniper rifle. <laughs> it's precise enough, you know, for you to be able to sit back and simply pick off your enemies. And mm -hmm. I really think that to get some good combat going, it's not... Uh, the, the ability, for example, here to have this sort of sniping situation um, is, is, you know, it's not a good one for um, gameplay, for the purposes of gameplay. Mm -hmm. um, I think the other thing about this area, and this comes up all the way through this mod, and I didn't realise it until I re was replaying it for the purposes of doing this review, is that most of the combat areas tend to be shooting galleries. And mm -hmm. this is this is one of them as well, where you know you are you've got the two mounted guns and you can set up there and just pick them off and that's it. And uh, we'll see this in sort of future areas in the game where where you've got these wonderful outdoor spaces that are really well built. They look great, but you don't ever need to use them. You can sit back and just you know and snipe your way through it. Um, mm -hmm. And it's kind of a shame. Um, I think one of the other criticisms I had was that this area here is not a loop you know you've got this kind of car park that's completely yeah. uh, closed off and you know i think if that had been opened up uh, to 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 create a site uh, sort of a loop through this area a circle i think the uh, the combat could have been a lot more interesting and created a bit more of an arena yeah mm -hmm. is that it is that your com is that your contribution my my contribution is god <laughs> But most of my thoughts are just saying, <laughs> "What? Well, I, I see, you know, what you're trying to say with that. Like that would be fun too, right? But like, what's here right now isn't really, you know, it's it's it's, it's like fine. <laughs> it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's okay. nothing wrong. <laughs> so like, ah, because you're, most um, of the things that you, um, you know, are talking about, yeah, are things that have to do with what you choose to do and not so much what you are allowed to do um, there are options that's true you can jump downstairs and get straight into the uh, and get straight into the action or you can sit back and snipe that's true yeah, and there, there's cover there's uh, you know the, the, the only thing you know that, like when you get in, into the car park mm -hmm. by accident you know you're just like oh I'm gonna look here and then you're stuck in there yeah that's 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 the only problem probably, because they can trap you in there, uh -huh. and none of the doors open. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think, in general, it's it's an okay place. Like, um, I disagree, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, I think I think it's a missed opportunity as a, as a, as a combat arena, or, or, you know, I mean, I, th I think the, the, an effort to try and give the player options and I've said this on my I posted this rules of mapping thing yesterday on the site I don't know if you saw that 
Mm, no, <laughs> I okay. haven't seen that. Yet. So I posted like to Jim's sort of rules of mapping, and there's about eleven of them. I'm going to keep adding to them as we discover things in this, you know, in this in this series. Um, mm-hmm. And one of them was give the player options. So really, that's exactly what he did. <laughs> you know, he's given the player options about how they want to, you know, approach the area. Um, yeah. I think that it would have been better to put them down in the arena first and then give them the option to go up onto the, you know, platform rather than having them start in a sniping area. Personally. Mm-hmm. Um, to promote a bit more of the, uh, you know, a bit more interesting decision-making gameplay. Oh, that's annoying. That barrel doesn't move. Sorry. I'm now in the long corridor area um, mm-hmm. with uh, the combines. Are you going to um, skip the staircase? Um, oh, no, no, I forgot we didn't talk about it. I, like, I really, really like staircase combat, I have to say. There's something very cool about it, and I don't know what it is. I, I quite enjoy the uh, the the dynamic of, of, you know, higher and lower enemies as you, you move through that cycle. Don't know why. Um, if anybody can please start including more staircase combat in their mods, I'd be a very, very happy man. Mm. What do you think about staircase combat? <laughs> I, 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 I like it when I go from the top to the bottom. Ah. The bottom to the top. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's interesting though because surely going, yeah, going from the bottom to the top is more challenging, right? Having yeah, to... yeah, but with the other one, I can do cool jumps and shit and shotgun people. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is an interesting point as well. I think that it's about um, challenge, and to me, at the moment, one of my things is I really, really want people to make more challenging mods as mm-hmm. in not throw a million combine at the player but actually think like try and make it as challenging as possible to get through a particular area right mm-hmm. um, and um, and and really just kind of refine the the, 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 the gameplay so that um, you know it, you're getting as much as possible out of what you've added into the mod um, out of the areas and the, the entities and that kind of thing rather than um, you know it's it's a combat area, here's a bunch of combine, kill them, done. Yeah? Yeah. Um, and the, uh, and so going upstairs is far more challenging than going downstairs. Downstairs may, may be more fun, but going upstairs is more of a challenge and more of a battle. And more mm-hmm. of something to be overcome, if you see what I mean. Cool. I, I guess. <laughs> no, go on. What? Go for it. Uh, I, I mean, it, it it is true that it is more challenging, and um, but I'm I'm trying to think about you know what 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 what's up with it. But um, like my my problem is also to do with how they are usually designed. Uh, like I I have issues with that because often they use these brailing models and everything. That you can get stuck on Clip easily. On. Yeah, you get clipping. And going clipping downstairs issues. is a lot easier because you tend to not get stuck on those things because you just run past them and shoot people. Yeah. And um, when when you have to go upstairs, you're usually hugging the walls. <laughs> yeah. And, you and sort of like the, um, angling the corners and that kind of thing with yeah mm. with the gun. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, so I've just finished the long tunnel section with all the combine in it, right? To me, this was sort of one of these areas where, unfortunately, if you kept the combine at a distance, it would have been far more challenging. And instead, you have the shotgun guy come running straight up to you toe to toe. We talked about this last time, but it's one of my pet hates is really the combine doing stupid things. Mm-hmm. Um, as an enemy, you know, I really. I mean, all you've got to do is put in a NPC clip wall just to stop them from running, you know, all the way down to the player. Um, because that's the kind of default. Default I would mode. Put a line instead. But okay. <laughs> yeah. No. I, whatever. I, I I cheat and just simply stick <laughs> an NPC clip brush, oh, just to stop them. It's so low budget, but it works really well, so it's mm. fine. Um, but you know, either way. Um, and I'm now at the tram. What were your thoughts on the tram? Um. Well, you can go all reminisce about the tram and half life and be like, hey. I know this place. <laughs> um, I guess it's 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 very much a homage, isn't it? Um, and uh, I I quite liked it. It's all right. There isn't really much interesting to see on the journey, though. I think was my problem. It's a bit dull, you know. I mean, like Half Life 
throws all these interesting things for you to look at and starts introducing concepts in the world and that kind of thing. This just takes you through some grey tunnels. There's not really much to see. Well, there is stuff. <laughs> There's stuff, but it's not very interesting. <laughs> well, did you want to see people being tortured? In yes. Simulation? That would have been really good to put that in here. It's a good idea. Well, why? There's no reason for people to be tortured here. Oh, or maybe more testing then. Do you know mm. what I mean? I think I think it would have been a good opportunity to showcase some more testing areas that we saw at the, towards the beginning. Mm -hmm. But you know, just my thoughts. If you're going to make the player sit in a box for a while, then give them something interesting to look at. You're that not in it for that long, though. Eh, that's long enough. I'm like, Ugh, come on. <laughs> it's just a trip, man. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Whatever, come on. So this is oh there you go. So you got some combine running away, and they're like, oh, they've seen me. Oh, I'm in trouble. Um, so what was your? I'm trying to remember what your uh, your recommendation was for once the tramet finishes. Uh, crouch. Stay inside. Yeah, it, just never make them see you until you're stuck. Oh, that's too late. It's already well, it's yeah. already happened. Yeah. I've blown it. Oh, so D David said that you had to look left, probably somewhere on the trip. Oh, so okay. Something. Which is, you know, that's fair. That's Half Life. You know, if you're not looking, <laughs> if you're not paying attention. Um, but, you know, they also do a pretty good job of making you pay attention. Of going, mm. there's a noise. Look over here. Um, but anyway, so I think it's uh, interesting. <laughs> so once we jump off the tram, we get another combat arena. Um, this I found to be. Um, another, you know, it's another toe-to-toe -to -toe battle once again, the Combine are just running pretty much at me, uh, not particularly caring about their own existence um, do So it isn't much of a shooting gallery Well, okay, fair. I said some of the areas were shooting galleries, mm. not all of them um, but there are there are quite a few um, This particular one is uh, you know, oh there's the G-Man again Look. Oh, he's always <laughs> up in those windows um, <laughs> I honestly, It's great, this playthrough, I've spotted him every time, last time, didn't even see him I, I play with, with blinkers on, I really do, uh, most of the time. Um, the, uh, you know, this this, this area's okay, but yeah, I get a bit tired of Combine just running straight up to me and trying to hit me in the face with their weapon instead of hiding and shooting me. Um, I can't remember where to go. Oh, so I'm now in the, I'm in the, oh, I've got to, you've got to basically activate the, uh, the checkpoint, haven't you? Uh, yeah, so so you can continue. Is there, a, is there a vent or something? I'm trying to remember how we get up there. He, David's such a fan of vents. I'm sure there's a vent. Oh yeah, there we go. We got to jump up onto the uh, onto the cases, onto the uh, the power cabinets, and uh, through the vent. Yeah, I already. <laughs> well then, you could at least help me out. <laughs> Am I saying you know a lot this time? I have no idea. Really? Can let's let's ask the chat. Chat. Am I saying you know a lot this time? Because last time I said you know, and mm -hmm. punctuated almost every sentence with it. Um, I don't know. Why is don't? Is that your way of saying agree with me? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just it's one of those nervous punctuation things, and and I'm interested to see whether I'm less nervous this time. Why don't the vending machines work, David? Why you've put these wonderful, wonderful new fronts on them, but I can't get a can out of it. How annoying is that? It's it's these kind of details that just suck the life out. What other thing? When the keys don't work. <laughs> I'm gonna give my duck to paper. What the hell is this crap? Sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so we've now opened up our checkpoint. Um, I think the other thing, fine. So we had a bit of a puzzle to get into the checkpoint to turn it off. Um, I don't know, didn't really feel like, oh look, here we go, combine stupidness. There we go, running straight at me, through the doorway. No, whatsoever. I do wonder if combine do actually give a crap about their own their own existence. They don't, no. clearly. Um, what, that, 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 that there are ways to make them care. You know, yes, they, yes. But, but, but it, it, that they aren't really aware of each other. Um, the uh, interesting thing as well is, you know, oh no, I was going to say, if, if we had that Austin Powers thing with the, uh, you know, the henchmen. I don't know if you know about what I'm talking about, but where the henchmen have have like a backstory and have families and and yeah, 
<laughs> you know, you, 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 the flashback of a combine heading home to his wife and kids, and you know, and that kind of thing. Yeah, it's it's. Daddy won't uh, be coming home today. Yeah, I, I've seen that joke in a, a bunch of other shows as well. Especially, I think Robot Chicken does it. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and, like, but the, with, with stormtroopers and everything. The Death Star health and safety and all that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, okay, so then we're heading up to the next area. Uh, so I'm back in the tram again uh, and heading on. Heading on up. Um, D- ducking this time? No, no, I will take your advice and duck. <laughs> Does it really make a difference? Yeah, yeah they don't see you. Uh, until you stand up. That's fantastic. Be- because they can't see yes, your. They're, they're. your your eye position is below. So the they're, they're on wait. They're on wait till scene. Is that the point? Yeah, I do think this is the bit where the the ride goes bad. It does go kablooey. How do you how yeah. do you deal with this situation? Help me because it's, it's coming learned, up quickly. Help. What, what I've learned in this mod is that it doesn't <laughs> crash into the depths of whatever, and uh, so so if you I'm just wait, you're okay. Safe if I just stay inside. <laughs> uh-huh. But I mean, you know, it's it's a nice bit of. Theatricality, well done, right? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So, here we are, toe-to-toe with a bunch of combine again. Uh, but that's, you know, it's engaging enough. Having gob mode on really just helps with this kind of thing. You know, you can feel so... Oh, poor you. <laughs> you couldn't just feel, like, fantastic. I was, to be honest, I was actually wondering why I was still on 100 health. I was like, oh my god, this game's so easy. You know, there's, t- there's too much health around. <laughs> I actually I, played most of it uh, without it on, thinking it was on. Then I was like, "Oh, I'm still out there. I'm getting better." So, would you say that That's there are two? Uh, not play so. Would you say that there are too many pickups and health pickups in this mm-hmm. game? No, no, because the the thing is, they they are put in places where I usually don't look, because I'm very good, uh, very bad at looking for health. Ah. So, okay. I, and and what what this mod has taught me is just keep your eyes open. Yeah, when gotcha. When it's done, make sure you check the area because there isn't going to be anything else. <laughs> Interesting. Like, I, I, w- I was actually... That, that was kind of my point with this, is that there isn't really all that much to pick up. Uh, yeah. At, oh, at not, least not enough. Bad, you know? Yeah. Like, now, in battle, you're in trouble if you didn't prepare. Yeah, so I'm now into this kind of tiled area once you get off the... Uh, you know you know with the turrets, the floor turrets? Um... And here, the Combine are actually acting like, you know, they've got a brain. They're hiding behind things. They're not moving forward. They're moving yeah. between cover. I mean, every now and again, one of them breaks cover and, and has a go at running on in and finishing you off. But that kind of works. So I'm not really too sure what he did differently here that to pr- sort of promote that kind of, you know, business. Mm-hmm. Or whether it was just simply playtesting and working out, oh, yeah, that's... that's the, you know, sometimes when you build an area and you put the Combine into it with some nodes and that kind of thing, they just do reasonably intelligent things you know the the the, mm. the ai works in that particular way um whereas uh in some areas they don't um where's he gone interesting so i must admit i think in my notes i said that i didn't like this area with the uh with the the, the turrets but on a second playthrough now i'm actually quite liking it it's quite challenging having the turrets cover the open areas and then having the combine kind of maneuvering to to, to sort of kill you as well. Yeah. Uh, I, I wish there was more stuff to hit the turret with. Yes. <laughs> more physics props, please. And the portable chairs just don't cut it. <laughs> the, the little uh, the little lunchroom chairs just ain't gonna cut it. That turret ain't going anywhere. Well, the, um, the last time I played this, uh, I tried to hit, the, hit it, and it, it, it's very close to that pillar, so it just <laughs> leaned against that and still worked. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> yeah, all, that's always oh. frustrating. Um, oh look, there's a bin over in the corner. That's handy. I might use that. Got it. Um, so this is quite an interesting, you know, style of gameplay, and the fact that this is closing the distance between you and a particular foe. I mean, obviously we've seen it with the sniper, um, where you have to chuck the grenade through the window or whatever, and you, but you have to close the distance first. And you know, he's doing this quite interestingly with the the turrets. So, good job, David. This is good. I am. I am sort of, you know, wondering about something uh, like in 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 your reasoning where because I'm I'm still sort of confused about you talking about shooting galleries and then oh maybe it's an area coming up there's an area coming up oh I know yeah, I, well I know I know that there is an area coming up yeah. but 
sort of like your your definition of a shooting gallery. I'm not really sure where it starts and ends because <laughs> over here, when combine take cover and stuff, you're like, oh yeah, so over here they do take cover and all that. That's true. And, but and then I'm thinking, so this is a shooting gallery, isn't it? <laughs> um, yes, but it's a bit more dynamic. At least I can move forward, or at least there's cover for me to be able to move forward into the, you know, into the uh, into into the battle arena. Um, I think if, when when I'm saying shooting gallery, I, what I really mean is is that where there is really um, no uh, benefit to the player to move into the arena whatsoever, and they can just hang back and pick, you know, and pick the combine mm -hmm. off. That's really what I mean, and I think you get much better gameplay and much more, you know, interesting gameplay if the player is encouraged, lured into, you know, the um, the arena. Mm -hmm. Do I make any sense? Well, I will see which area you're talking about that really bothers you, even though I think I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. But. So I'm now being chased by combine <laughs> to this area um, because. They're, they're, they're intent on hitting me with their weapons. Um, it won't do anything. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's interesting. I can't remember who said it the other day, but Half Life 2 really needs the shove mechanism from, uh, you know, from, from uh, Left 4 Dead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just kick him back. <laughs> but uh, that will make it pretty overpowered. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm just got up to the combine, shove him, and he'd be like, "Oh, oh no! <laughs> what do I do?" That was seriously cheating. Then I just really did use my god mode to just walk up to the turret and knock it over. <laughs> um, well, that's because turrets are not our friends. No, I like I I've loved turrets ever since Half Life One. I think they're a great you know uh, it, 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 they can really be used to do some fantastic kind of gameplay, and um, it really is the same as having the um, the chopper outside the windows of the building, you know, it's sort of, you can cover mm -hmm. certain areas and keep areas covered and dangerous and certain lines of sight are kind of cut off to the player, especially if you combine like turrets with things like hoppers, it can get really challenging because you can't advance enough, close enough to the turret to be able to punt it over, if you see what mm -hmm. I mean um, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think what I would like better in turret areas if there were more uh uh, if you had, um, you know, an opportunity to take an alternative route, because mm -hmm. I don't see that done a lot, where you can sort of circle around back. Sort of, yeah, yeah like a, a what's the word? Oh, I can't remember. I'm very. I, I said the hangover is preventing my memory from thinking of certain words. Um, uh, it's fine. Um, excuses. <laughs> Okay, so we're dropping. We we now have a point of no return after that combat area, which is a great thing. I think David should have had more of them in there. Um, and uh, you know, it's it's that push gameplay which is always good to do to keep the player moving on. Uh, okay, so now we've got another uh, uh, got another tram which is out of order. Um, but the one thing I like about the tram system here is that it creates quite a large playing space, and it's not playing space. You're not playing in it, but it creates quite a large environment. I mean, there's no reason why this tram section couldn't have been here, and these sections could have been just walls where the fences are. But what, mm -hmm. you know, he's broken it out and created a much larger space and used the fences to define the play area, which to me I think is great. And I made that point in one of my rules that I put down because I, I think it's yeah, exactly yeah, my meaningless drivel. Um, mm. <laughs> oh look, it's a bunch of crates with a grate at the top of it to get through into the passage. <laughs> Oh, David. Um, <laughs> your obsession with vents is... Doors are overrated. Exactly. Um, That's why they're all locked. <laughs> <laughs> so, what we're doing, okay, so I'm going to drop down into this section here, in the vent, and then... I think we're, we're, we'll be hitting the area that you would consider the definition of a shooting gallery. <laughs> uh, okay, and this is where you get the, uh, the crossbow. Is that right? Yeah. What are your thoughts on the crossbow as the weapon? When um, should when should it be used? When it should should it not be used? When should you give it to the player? When I am in a shooting gallery area. Really? It's dull. <laughs> what? Why? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, because it's incredibly high powered, right? I'm just having a drink. Sorry. All this talking. Well, yeah, that's that's why you use it to shoot barrels, because then you make it even more cool when you get coaxial explosions with just one bolt. <laughs> 
Make uh, everything cool. Um, yes. But, but I, I wouldn't use it for any other purpose. I don't like the crossbow for just, you know, like... Because like a shooting gallery is sort of like long-range combat. Yes. So you aim and shoot, yes. and then people die. Yes. And um, I don't really see where else you can really use a crossbow unless... Well, it is fun for... Stuff. It is fun for nailing combine mm -hmm. to the wall. Um, you know, which is always... Yeah, very bright spot for that. Yeah. After the time when I try that, they just don't get nailed. <laughs> <laughs> so my main so. comments about this overall shooting gallery area, and I, you know, fair enough, I don't think there's anything wrong with the shooting gallery. I put one into one of my maps recently, and it was merely just a sort of a... Um, an addition. It, it was kind of an aside sort of game for the player to play. Uh, it had, if they go to an area, I think you've played it. You go up a bell tower in one of my maps, and you can. I haven't released the map yet, but anyway. Yeah. Um, but this space. What annoyed me about this area is this space is huge. You know, this actual this area that he's created here. So we've been inside. We've been through lots of different indoorsy Half-Life One style areas, and then you get to this great big enormous out, outdoor space, um, which. Is um, you know, it's 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 really well mapped once again, and it looks great. And, you, and uh, but but it's wasted because it's just a shooting gallery. It's also yeah. a pretty place, so Sorry? you can look at it. it yeah, it, it's not. It's a pretty place. So True. You, just, you can look at it. Yes, but so you don't have to be grumpy about it just being a shooting gallery. No, it's <laughs> it just seemed like a wasted up a was not a wasted opportunity. It's a wasted large space of mapping that you could have got a ton more game players you know so you could have quite easily had a shooting gallery here and then had the player work their way through this huge space and you could have crammed a ton of gameplay into this um, of simply even just exploration and discovery or but puzzles and jumping does, through things that that would add a lot more work though to both the area but also the you know you have to Make if you want to really do that well, you also have to make things lead up to this event. No, so there's a no lot of work don't. ahead of it as well. No, you don't, you're wrong. Um, that's okay, but it's okay to be wrong, is all I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> I haven't proven any counterpoints yet. Um, I'm, not, I'm not wrong yet. <laughs> okay, so okay. Mappers can do whatever they want to. Absolutely fine. You want to create great big spaces that are wasted in, you know, in in like a five minute shooting gallery. That's your business. Whatever. I'm just saying that if you're going to create a space that looks this good, yeah, have the player spend some time in it. You know, have the player work their way through the area. Don't waste it. Um, because here I was just really frustrated. I was like, this is a great space. I'd love to have been able to sort of, you know, do a whole bunch of gameplay in this space. But it's wasted. I just head straight through up to the mines and I'm out. So if he would have put a little puzzle here, <laughs> just a little puzzle, and then had the combine come. No, the combine at the beginning is fine. The shooting gallery bit at the beginning is fine. But then after that, you could have had a whole bunch of gameplay here. I think I would have liked it better if there was a puzzle and then combine. Because right, if you why? put the combine first, then you, you still have that problem that you're just put in here with combine and you know I was in like sort of you work your way through this and then suddenly the combine turn up and you're kind of in this kind of well, no, because of something you do <laughs> yes no that makes sense that's true uh, I mean given the um, excuse for the excuse is that the wrong word given the the concept of the map and the mod overall does it matter that the com you know you can justify all of it by saying oh well it's just a, a human testing thing right the matrix yeah exactly I do I, I have to let's just quickly talk about the skybox because I think it was really clever I think it's, it's a great effect on the skybox of the dome mm -hmm. um, really like it brilliant thumbs up do more of these kind of things uh, it's really simple but it's a really great idea yeah it's a fancy skybox yeah I mean you know skyboxes are great but in this case if you hadn't tweaked it yet you know what I mean, the minute you come out into this area it's like, oh you know, it's great, if you look up uh, this place isn't right, you know um, mm -hmm. anyway, so heading through, and I'm heading up to the mines now and the mm -hmm. stairs break for no apparent reason, just to annoy you, it would seem um, <laughs> or scare you a little bit, really? was it like, ooh I, um, I, I got startled, <laughs> I really? was like 
Well, you're well, you're a, you're a delicate soul. That's the problem. You know, yeah, you're I'm a very delicate soul. Mm, like I, 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 when I make amnesia maps, I get scared of my own maps. <laughs> really? I've never played amnesia. Is it worth it? Uh, well, no, you won't finish it. Oh, really? Was that? Because it's scary. Well, because I never finish anything. But uh, um, well, that's that, I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, okay. I didn't say that. Um. Oh god, I'm, I'm actually scrolling through my notes briefly. Um, how long have we been going at this? It's now four o'clock. We've been going for just over an hour. Wow. Uh, uh, you can see the time on your streaming thingy. You're is your it, own. Is anyone? All right. Is anyone still actually watching? Or not? Yes. We we've got six people. Oh, ah, fair enough. Um, okay, so we're not too far away from the end, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> let's get through. So I think that the um, the mines are were wasted as an environment. You spend no time in them at all. I don't really understand why they were there. Um, and what's with the complete lack of um, uh, what's the word? Oh, my brain is um, displacements. Right? It's all a bit blocky. Let's face it. Displacements are hard. <laughs> no, they're not. They're very, very easy. Um, no, but, but that's what most people say. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I'm I'm okay with them too. But I know yeah. that a lot of people find it difficult to use displacements. Gotcha. So it's, it's, I think it's mainly the management of them. Yeah, I'm with you. No, I I I think they're brilliant. I think they're easy to do and make them up look fantastic. So the um, the the lift with the generator, mm -hmm. pointless. <laughs> Complete waste of time. You know, you turn, have to go and turn the generator on. Okay, fine. It takes two seconds. It's not really much of a puzzle. Just saying. Um, and then we're out into the uh, hunter area. Tell me about your thoughts about the hunter fight because it upset me. It's a bit hard. It is. Suddenly there's this massive difficulty spike, right? Mm hmm And they really aren't, you know, the 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 um the health pickups and stuff really aren't dispersed properly. Would you agree? Um. Uh, yeah. I think I think it's it, I think it's okay from the health perspective, but I think it's just that um, because it's three. You have to yes. focus on three things at once, and what I had a lot was that I just got attacked from the side a lot. But if it were yeah. two, it, I would have been pretty <laughs> fine because I do I do like it because, uh, but um, you know, like it's, it it is you know a fun little area. Uh, the 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 arena itself is fine, but it's just a bit too much with three of them. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, and I'm sort of thinking, well, and it doesn't really give you enough oomph to to take care of them. You know, you really do have to battle your way through it. Um, and uh, I mean, I'm on gob mode, so I'm cheating. But um, you know, your your result, you end up resorting back with the uh, the shotgun and doing double barrel blast with the shotgun, which. Well, I, I actually, um, when fighting hunters, I nowadays avoid using barrel, double barrel shotgun blast. Why is that? Because if I miss them, I miss with two. Ah, you waste my ammo. So actually, what you just go single barrel? Yeah. Oh. Um, interesting. I, I also disabled auto aiming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't have auto aim on either. Um, well, well I, I think you do. Oh, do I? Oh, whatever. I don't care. It's on by default. Oh, I think. Okay, fair enough. Depends on your difficulty setting, but there's also a convar for it. Ah. Um, yeah. The um, I don't know these things. I just play. I just build maps. I don't care. Whatever. Um, <laughs> um, Excuses. <laughs> the um, but yeah. So I I found you know this this crossed over the line between challenging to annoying this this hunt fight right is my opinion mm -hmm. it it's, wasn't fun I, I, I don't, it's just a bit out of balance but it's not you know it, it's it's you know the, the, the fight itself the idea of the fight here is fine I think the arena's fine I think the the uh, you know the, the place to put hunters is fine uh, I just think that the the balance is off and it's just too heavy and there's not enough uh, for you to play with in the area to be able to, you know, take them on dynamically or whatever. You have I to think some you fall back on your arsenal. Sorry. I think some verticality would have helped. Yeah, that's a good idea. Like just just a little walk. Uh, that's that's uh, that's something I think uh, for a lot of maps and mods. I think that a lot of mods could use an extra, you know, little. Um, what would you call it? Like like catwalk. Or something like not literally a just uh, an a, just an level. additional level and an additional yeah so an, an extra circuit road. an extra circuit yeah straight and shoot yeah, yeah. gotcha no and I think you're right 
if it's combat, if in doubt, add another, add, add extra, you know, ways around and extra routes and use verticality, which is one of the rules I put into my rules, I think, um, list of rules. Uh, mm -hmm. So now we're heading down to the. Um, we've just done that puzzle where you have to break the boards on the outside of the door, which, which is just you, which you again can't do with the gravity gun. <laughs> no, that's true. But I still like that puzzle. That worked for me as a puzzle. It was like I can't open this door. Why not? And you have to go around and look from the other side and work out what's going on. That was a very simple but quite a nice little connection, and I actually felt a little source of achievement when I actually managed it. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's good, but I often find the boards before I found the door. Gotcha. Be um, like, oh, these are boards that are blocking a door, and then I. But that, that's that's still, I guess, okay. Yeah. Um, that you still figure it out. Gotcha. So then we head down the uh, seawall, and we end up in this little dock area, which I love the atmosphere in this. The thunder yeah. and the rain is so nicely put together, and it really does make you kind of feel that you're heading into something pretty dicey. You know, that it's gonna something something pretty bad is gonna happen here, and then it doesn't. Mm -mm. I don't get the feeling that something bad is going to happen here. Um, really? I, mean, I got a kind of a threat, you know, like a feeling of, of, of things are getting grim. You know, things are now getting, getting pretty threatening at this point. Mm, and unfortunately, no, I, I what do you, get you, you get a battery puzzle. It's like, oh, God. <laughs> um, that was just my observation of it. Um, well, then, this is a little sort of cool down area. Yeah, that's true. Because you just had the hunter fight. Yes. So now you're just sort of chilling out with some batteries. Oh, the battery puzzle. What, what's, what, what's wrong, man? Oh, let's talk, talk about the battery puzzle. What's wrong, man? Oh, I'm so, what the hell was that? Hurt feelings? No, no, no. Things? A barrel just shot its way across this area on its own. Yes. Yes. That's creepy. That's the spooky barrel. Ah. That, that barrel was there on purpose. <laughs> Um, when he comes around the corner, I'm going to roll. <laughs> oh, just wait, here he comes. I've been waiting there for three weeks. He's going to come. Um, <laughs> uh, they've got to send it's another one soon. Simulate. <laughs> <laughs> um, the um, the battery puzzle. I'm so sick to death of the battery puzzle. The battery puzzle is not a puzzle, because we've all done it before. And this is one of the points I made in my rules. If you're going to do a puzzle, make it an original puzzle. Don't do, don't give us a puzzle that we've all seen before because that's not a puzzle. It requires nothing of me other than go find the batteries. You're not making the mental connection between you know different different parts to solve a puzzle. All you're doing is 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 chore, a chore basically. Mhm. Mm but but the batteries are you know it's not easy to find. Them. Yeah, it is. <laughs> not always. What in other maps? Oh well, crap. <laughs> I mean, I've seen some maps where they randomise the location of the batteries, right? Like this, this one actually has four batteries around, and uh, you only need three. Really? Well, that's an interesting yeah. twist. I hadn't thought of that, but let's face there's, it. There's one over at the docks as really? well. Uh, what yeah. if you go all the way back? Uh, so, uh, there's oh, a little sorry. dock area uh, at the back where there's one ship. All right. That's a pretty cool looking area. <laughs> Is it? Oh, we should go and, and there's like a little. Uh, little battery in a small garage uh -huh. or a warehouse bit that's closed. Yeah. Is that your dog? Oh, no, no. Yeah, I've got. I've already been there. Yeah, no, I've seen all that. Um, yeah. Is that your dog? Barking. Hmm? Was that your dog barking? No. Oh. Is that a neighbor's dog or something? Hmm, probably. <laughs> um, okay, moving on. Uh, so then we change to map God knows what, five, four. I'm not sure what we're on to now. <laughs> I haven't been keeping track, which is kind of sad. Um, and this is, we're heading into the whole zombie area, right? Or the Cape Crab area. Um, yeah, with with, with uh, barnacles, as well, I think. Yeah, oh, I wasn't sure about this area. What do you think about the next few sections? Um, y use stuff that's around you to kill things, because it's useful. <laughs> True. Um, uh, the, the area itself... Um, it's it's yeah it's, it's fairly easy to just do it. I thought that the areas, the actual gameplay areas, were too big, so the zombies never really pose much of a threat to you because you've got plenty of space to move around, and zombies don't move mm -hmm. very quickly. The yeah, you're, you're not surprised. Yeah. Yeah, the fast zombies are a bit more of a challenge, but um, um, but yeah, I don't know. It's a bit boxy, and the space doesn't really, I don't know. Um, doesn't really sort of promote dynamic 
moving around, if you know what I mean. I can't even talk anymore, so hangover's killing me. <laughs> um, um, do you understand anything that I'm saying? Um, I, I understand most of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so... Um, you know, it's, uh, I think zombies, you need a tighter space for, for the slow zombies. Fast zombies-wise, you can get away with a space like this. So, um, yeah, it's just a bit dull. It's like, oh, they're a million miles away, and I've got plenty of room. There's no fun here. You know, well, there's no challenge, at least, anyway. There's no game. It's just mm -hmm. killing for the sake of it. I could have quite easily run through this area and avoided all the zombies and not even engaged them. Apart from the fast ones, obviously. And I think yeah. that's actually something that comes up a lot. Is that's something I actually try and do these days? Is when I'm playing a mod, I try and um, I try and run through an area without actually engaging in anything that's in it. Yeah, I do that a lot too. Just to uh, see if you can get away with it. If yeah, but I, if, if they do it sort of you know in a clever way, then I don't mind it because well, you, you like that. There's a lot of um, <laughs> there there. Are, uh, are a lot of maps where oh, I'm just <laughs> stupid character. Are you getting, are you getting killed by something? <laughs> no, I, I was just shooting things because they were annoying me. Yes. Um, but um, what what what? Let's see. What was I going to say? I was going to no talk idea. about the the problem of just being able to walk through places. I think it's not always bad when it's sort of like slightly tricky to do it. You know. But when it's slightly tricky to just run past everything. Well, I think this is why things like ladders and stuff like that come in come in handy in situations like that because you can actually slow the player right down with the ladder, and they can actually you know realize it actually stops them from being able to simply just run straight through an area. Yeah, but it, it still feels a bit artificial because because then you're you're just forcing them to slow down, uh -huh. and you know, like. Because I'm, I'm assuming you mean like this kind of si situation happens when when there's like hat crabs or something jumping you in the back. Um, yeah, for example. Yeah, I wouldn't like that because then I have no control over whether they hump me or not. <laughs> I can't turn around and shoot. So and then you get so you have to make sure you clear out the area first, I guess, and that's your point. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, is, is that how do you force the player to engage with the gameplay you've put in front of them? Yeah, but I, I I would actually sort of. I mean, I guess it's about try to make the 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 avoiding of them part of the gameplay. Um, so that's, you you either attack them head on, or you are you try the clever thing, like you try to be clever. Yeah. And um, get around it. Hmm. Um. Yeah. No, I understand that what you mean. You satisfy both parties. Um. Yes, that's true. I mean, it depends on. I mean, if you look at the official games, if we're going to base ourselves on those, right, as the way to do it, um, then I think it's um, quite interesting that the, uh, the, the they gate almost every area, right? You can't get mm -hmm. out of here without completing the challenge that we've given for you. And that yeah. each game area is, as I was saying on other things, um, you know, each area is a different game unto itself, right? Each area mm -hmm. presents you with a different set of gameplay rules that you have to then engage with and learn and play. Um, and master, and um, you are not allowed to leave that area until you have mastered that skill set. Yeah. Or used it to complete a particular thing. And I guess gating is is something which mods sometimes suffer from. Uh, they're not, you know, they they struggle with gating areas. Yeah, Either but lift coming down or MP NPC opening a door for you is honestly one of the most best ways to uh, to deal with that. Ah. Uh. I hate it when NPCs have to do things for me. <laughs> um, it's 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 a really useful way of gating of stopping the player from moving forward without it feeling too gamey. Well, it feels very gamey to me when an NPC has to open the door. <laughs> what, really, what when Alex has to use her thing and you know this magic. Yeah. Well, especially when it's rebels. Yeah, that have to open doors for me because because they, uh, it, it's like why do you have the key? Yes. Why yes. is the door locked? Yeah. And it's like, well, we're keeping the dudes out. Well, yeah, okay, great. But, uh, not letting me go there, so. <laughs> like there's um, yeah. I mean, for example, there's there's that kind of. Oh, we were stuck in here, and now someone's opened the door and allowed us to move to the next area. Um, oh, I hate this bit. I am now at the. I'm in the zombie area, and I'm in the area where you drop into the large room and all the head crabs come out. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can, oh, I can see it. <laughs> this is this level, this section really pissed me off. Excuse my language. Um, but it's it's not that bad. Oh, I you literally have to hide. I hid in the corner and held the crowbar up in front of me, and that was it. That was my I gameplay tactic. Them. You shot them. I, I, I shot them. It's I madness. crowbarred the poison ones because poison ones die in one hit with yep. the crowbar. Yeah. And that's how you take care of it. <laughs> the problem is he's <laughs> combining. I use my whole arsenal. He's combining um, normal head crabs with poison head crabs. That's the point of poison head crabs. No, it isn't. That's a terrible combination. You can kill the player in in like two seconds in that respect, and the player gets no opportunity to you know to to win. Yeah, I I, I guess if it, they were normal head crabs and poison head crabs, then it would have been better. A bit. Well, even that I struggle with. I don't think you should mix those head crabs together because you know all you need is one hit from a poison, and then you, you get hit by a normal, and you and you're dead. Yeah, yeah, but what would you like? What would you want in instead of that? Like, if you have a situation, what what where do you think the poison head crab would be useful? Uh, poison head crabs. Well, I mean, poison head crabs are creepy and they make the. <laughs> um, so yeah, they're very. Why do you think they bring your health down to one? Um, because it puts you in jeopardy. Uh, well, I think the point is that usually they are combined with either class. Yeah, usually I think they are combined with classic zombies. Yes, which is fine yes. because classic zombies take a long time to get to you, so you have the opportunity to go. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I've been hit. I need to get into a safer place. You know. Mm -hmm. um, whereas with fast head crabs, forget it. You know, you got no chance whatsoever, unless you sit there with a crowbar in front of you, like flailing yeah. out. Looking and like so having classic head crabs, or well, I call them classic because that's usually what they're referred to uh -huh. in mapping terms. No, but, no, I got it. Yeah, but for the streaming people. Oh, okay, sorry, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, they, they are the normal, the regular head crabs. Yeah. I think you could still get away with using those. Uh, yes, I think they, you are, can. they are slow as well. Um, if the last, the last the last couple of meters, they are really fast. If you get in a small space with them, you can yeah, they can be a nightmare because um, they're just doing the leaping continually, you know. Well, they don't. <laughs> the, the the regular head crabs don't leap that quickly mm. in, a, in succession. They they are very different from yeah, the fast. Yeah, that's true. The fast head crabs just they 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 drop back down and then they just go for the next jump. And the 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 regular head crabs, you can usually even just uh, kill them mid air. Um, or just step to the side and they yeah, will not that's hit. Yeah, um, I think those will still go on, be sorry. okay. Yeah, uh, I'm at the uh, I'm at the kind of the 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 the, the toxic waste tanker that spilled its load all over the uh, sh or shed its load, should I say? Oh, and now I'm being attacked by like fifty thousand fast head crabs that came out of nowhere, um, which I'm not a big fan of either. Um, unfortunately, the um, yeah, the the game player with the fast head crabs and just sort of unleashing a slew of them on you is just kind of annoying. I think maybe that might have been a timed event because I took too long. Uh, no, that there is a if you because uh, that there is one spot they come from a certain area. Okay. And you cannot really avoid triggering that. I think because okay. uh, it happens when you walk past it. Yeah. And um, oh, uh, it's it's on your way. To the other side, past the toxic wave. Gotcha. And then you get a flashback, and we have an end problem for a while. They're not very evenly spaced, are they? And they don't really tell you much. It's not as if they're leading you onto a certain gameplay or anything. No, they, well, they are leading you. Well, I, can't. Like, I mean, it's saying you need to go to the right. One shows you a guy that's looking at the grate, uh, and and sort of going, hmm. Yeah, but. And then the grate. When the flashback ends, the grate is uh, open. True. And you can get through it. And here, the guy runs to the right. Uh, indicating to you like that's the way to go. Um, in, in the sewer part, it shows you that you have to go in the wa into the water. Um, I don't really. It, it, you, it shows you okay. a lot of stuff. No, no, I get that. I think that. Um, but these aren't things that you you couldn't have worked out very quickly for yourself with simple yeah. exploration. So I'm not. That's true. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm just wondering. I mean, it's it's. I I think. The, the flat, I would have preferred it more if the flash packs had really told us something a bit more about what you know about who these people were mm -hmm. or what what's happening, as opposed to just you know signposting a little bit of something I could have worked out in two seconds, or not. <laughs> okay, and then we're heading down into the the area with the containers, which is my true hatred, where you literally get about a hundred and forty 
poison like fast hate crabs um, and uh, how did you deal with this situation uh, my tactic was to run over to that freight elevator in the distance and jump onto the container. That's what I did too. Um, and that's where I was relatively safe, but not completely. No, safe. no, some of them can make it up on the uh, on the uh, the way that you got up as well. But um, I'm not a big fan of this at all. I, I think that you would like fast head crabs more if. Uh, there was more foreshadowing of them being there. Yeah, I think that's true, but there was absolutely no reason to have this many of them either. You know, having this 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 number of head cramps really is unnecessary in my opinion. The gameplay mm. would have been just as you know essentially the same um, with you know four. Uh, um, actually, kind of introduced in in different ways would have been nice as well. Anyway, I don't like it. Don't. Don't throw a slew of hate crabs at me and, and think I'm going to be happy because <laughs> I'm not. Um, and uh, okay, so now we're jumping up. You know, nice little jumping puzzle once again with our crouch jumping. I didn't mind that. I thought that was okay. You, do you know what I mean? Get up onto the pipes. Yeah. To get out of the area. Um, it's, it's more pipes. <laughs> it's, uh, and I'm trying to get through this bit reasonably quickly now because we've been going for a while. So, um, and I want to get onto more interesting points. Back into another vent. <laughs> David says the more the merrier. <laughs> <laughs> no, David. Um, <laughs> David, yes, don't listen to Jim. It's nothing. It's, um, okay, two Jim seconds. Jim had a lot of bad dreams about fast head cramps. So they, they, they have a history. <laughs> they are spidery, let's face it. Um, they, they are very spidery. But if you want to lose weight, there are brilliant ways to do that. Um, well, not not when you've got an AGV suit. <laughs> um, okay, where are we? Okay, did David actually? Did did anyone? Did David reveal about how the mod was put together with regards to the design ethos and stuff? Um, I don't think you he, weren't paying attention. I was no, I was paying attention. But you've got you know, one I, job in this podcast, and you couldn't even do that. My my job is to counter your point <laughs> <laughs> and monitor the stream. Yeah, okay, yeah, he said that it, it was not built sort of randomly. It, it was... Uh, Planned. Let's see. He also says... You know, he says it's been in the works for five years. Really? Mm. What does that mean, I wonder? Does that mean that he sort of built little bits and pieces and then put it together, or...? A lot of reiterating, apparently. Ah, interesting. And, uh, and, and it, 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 like... It has a good foundation that it builds on. Mm, interesting. A set of environment that he, he, he wanted the player to progress through. Yeah. So. Oh, I just lost my breeze block to a barnacle. Not happy. Um, <laughs> barnacles, they're interesting. Um, I like them a lot. I think they're brilliant. Especially when you're sort of trying to cut the player's options down about movement. Um, but I think they're often misused to a certain extent. Um, I think that um, they should be used a in combination with other kind of entities to really lock the player down uh, with mm. regards to what they can and can't do and where they can go at a particular point. <laughs> it's a sort of a, a sort of a soft gate, if you like. Yeah, I think because uh, uh, I remember that video that you did about that level in Half Life. Oh yeah, there's uh, a barnacle at some point that is keeping you from getting your reward. Oh yeah, that was great. It's like a little mini game where it's sort of, you know, I've got I've got the box. You could lose it if you're not careful. Yeah. And 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 it's uh and, and it's also a case of if you just hopped into its tongue by accident while you're being greedy. Um yeah. you'd, you'd be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, exactly, cuz you're over that over that huge drop, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Um Okay, so I've got a little jumping puzzle here where you have to find a, a box or something to create a next step to get up onto this shelving. Uh, do you know where I am? Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, cool. I, I can see it. So. Oh right, yeah. I well, forget that. I'm, I'm pretty much making sure I'm always a step ahead. Of you. <laughs> oh, and now we're getting onto the chopper fight. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll brace myself. Just quickly though, let's take a quick look at this shed that I'm in. It's very good. You know that this is the way the 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 roof's been smashed in, and you've got the. Uh, the, the modelled lighting there, the beam lighting coming through. Yeah. Let's just take a moment. I mean, that beam lighting, I love it anyway. It just always looks good, no matter what you do with it. Um, I don't. I don't really like them. Really? Why not? 
because they're meshes and meshes that are that 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 uh, you can tell where it's intersecting often. True, and I must and admit they are a pain when you put them in the level because when you try and select anything near them, all you ever select is the model, so you're constantly yeah. vis grouping out of it. Make my own thing. What? <laughs> I I would make my own thing for them or. Make an entity. Well, that's because you know how to do all this amazing stuff, and the rest of us yes. don't. I'm sorry, Jim. I know. Well, if you just, you know, shared your services around, we'd all benefit from well, it. Well, I'm kind of busy. So <laughs> <laughs> I did do a very cool thing with the the thing I'm working on. The, oh, really? The mod that will hopefully contain the maps that I didn't finish. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. Do bag dolly tricks when um, they kill. Oh, okay, cool. Um. Yeah, and so if you've got unfinished maps, release them. I'm working on it. Not just you. That was a message to the whole oh, community. Oh, if you've got really? unfinished maps, we don't What's care. That? We don't care. Check it we out do there. Care. Do we? Okay. We, we, we care about the maps. Tell me about the chopper fight. Um, it, it's. Oh, yeah, it was pretty fun. Really? I, think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have infinite RPGs, man. <laughs> RPGs are fun. Well, I, I mean, everyone up. This was an interesting point that me and Darren came across last week, which was uh, or last month, which was um, oh god, I hate man hacks with a passion. Um, <laughs> the only fun to be had with man hacks is holding them up against um, people, you know, like no, a, like I a sword I blade. Like, I like grabbing them and smashing them into walls. Well, that's fun. It's more fun smashing them into someone's face. But yeah, um, so I'm going to pretend I'm not going to. I'm getting damaged by this thing. But anyway. Um, Okay, so so here we have a situation. This is what me and Darren were talking about earlier, the, other, the other month, which is here is a chopper, here is a grenade launcher, you know, or here's a, a rocket launcher. Fire the mm. rockets at the chopper, yeah? Um, yeah? You know, in the original Half Life game, they eat Half Life 2 and Half Life. They, they really get you on the run for a long time with the chopper on your ass, and you're eventually rewarded with a way of actually hurting it, you know? Mm -hmm. in, in here in, and in lots of mods, what we see is, you know, they. They just here's the thing to kill. Here's the object. You know, here's the tool to kill it. Kill it. Mm -hmm. That's no fun to me. That's kind of um, frustrating and annoying. Yeah, that, that I guess um, it's the issue of foreshadowing that people are not really uh, in in a lot of mods. You you get um, a, a lot of areas are sort of just split up, mm. and then in those cases, it it doesn't always. Uh, end up being as satisfying because there was nothing really leading up to it. Yeah, that's true. It's sort of I feel like I should have a boss fight. I know I must have a boss fight, so I'll have a boss fight. You know what I mean? Uh, well, no, not that. Just uh, I think it's more of a. I think it would be cool to have this here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Not, um, not necessarily like I need a boss fight because we know that there's no boss fight at the end. That's true. We talked so. about that, didn't we? Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. That's the chopper. Was the boss fight? Um, well, maybe because it's it's pretty close to the end. You know, there's not too much more going on here. Um, but there uh, is a staircase where oh. no enemies are on it, and you go down, and it would have been perfect. <laughs> but additionally, there is also a whole bunch of combine who have a suicide, um, su yeah, suicide wish, uh, who just run straight up to you. Um, well, they didn't for me. Really? No, these guys have just uh, absolutely made fools of themselves. Because they don't know I've got god mode on. You know? Well, I, I went for all the caches and stuff, and they can't get to all of them, so I'm just outsmarting them. Uh, oh, I just noticed that they've got the it's like the citadel type model with the portal on top of it over there, to the right. Yeah, yeah you'll cool. see it in a bit again, because this is the map where... Yeah, you, you, you go, go through the portal. You go, you go into it. You're like, I'm almost there. I've yeah. almost achieved something, and then of course you're like, "Oh no, I'm back." Jim, was that sarcasm? <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, okay. okay. So <laughs> where am I? Okay, yeah. So you're heading into the warehouse and then down the stairs, right? Um, yeah. So I mean, here's an interesting point: is that this area here with the warehouse and stuff is actually a really lovely area. It's beautifully done. It looks great. Um, you got that lovely sunset. You got the portal over there, and you've got a nice circular battle arena here. But I mm. killed all the combine by the cars at the beginning. I never, I never was, I never moved into the combat space. 
I, I actually went uh, using the hill. Like oh. I went over the grassy hill. Ah, the grassy that, knoll. That's the route I usually take, and that's the pretty intense route. <laughs> wow. No, 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 I didn't. I didn't do that. So you I can actually head down this way. Interesting. Uh, you head through the brick wall, the hole in the brick wall, and go down that way. Yeah. But the yeah, I mean that's that sounds that would be far more fun. He should have well, not allowed yeah, us to go. Why did you do it? Why well, did you do it? <laughs> because he, he sent us around the other way as well. He let me go down the road. And when I went to the road, I killed all of the combine by the cars. And I never got to play in this nice area. It's most upsetting. We've, we've, we've descended into gibbering children now. This is weird. Okay, <laughs> but let's get on here. with this. Let's get on with this. Um, moving down the stairwell. It is a very nice stairwell. And this would have been absolutely wonderful for a fight, wouldn't it? Look at that. Mm. Look at that for a stairwell. Oh. I, well, I wouldn't give for a stairwell like that, honestly. Um, <laughs> now it's getting weird. Right. <laughs> so now we're into... Oh, yeah. The final thing, right? The final drag. That doesn't seem fair oh, to call it a drag. Oh, That's harsh. Not, That's harsh, that, right? Nah. The final... Um, what's the word? I don't know. Whatever. Um, Rope <laughs> And unfortunately, you know, he has to put more... <laughs> more... Uh, man hacks in there just to upset yes, me but not everyone hates me. um i would like you to find me five people that like them just five people in the chat <laughs> <laughs> people in the chat who loves mashing up damn hack <laughs> um they're I, great for for mashing potatoes <laughs> just hold them up with what's, potatoes <laughs> what's the um what is the need for uh, I don't know. So, what, what gameplay wise, what's the point of man hacks? Um, scary suppressiony stuff. To flush you out from an area. Yes, that that. And Make you move. Yeah, mainly that I think, because that's usually what happens. The combine throw them in somewhere, and you're like, oh no. Yeah, they're like a grenade, right? That they can yeah. throw in, which is a pretty cool idea. Yeah. I really like it. But it's interesting how. Cool. It's interesting how I didn't... I'm trying to kill a guy with a health kit, by the way. My grav gun and health kit. I'm just grabbing anything I can. I just tried to punt a, an elite soldier with a I with did, a health kit. Did you use up all your weapons? Uh, no, I just like the grav gun. Um, mm. I quite like setting soldiers on fire with it. Um, and I've got god mode on, so why not? Um, well, you should be very glad that this map has the stuff for you to do that. It's true. Yay. Lots of physics props and lots of interesting ways to kill things, and that's great. Uh, they are a bit presented to you, because they're all sort of stacked at the back of the uh, the back of the tunnel there. And, uh, yeah, it does come off as kind of, here are the things that you must use in a moment to kill these things, um, as opposed to being sort of naturally, uh, you know, distributed. Um, I'm holding a gravity gun, and I'm not, because you feel like you're forced to do it, and I don't. Yeah. Um, no, I, I I did it because I enjoyed it. Let's face it. <gasps> I'm at the portal, right? And he's just mm -hmm. giving me a flashback of a guy walking into the portal. Okay. Mm. Now, given that there's nowhere else to go, you know, <laughs> I would have walked into the portal anyway. I think without the flashback. Um, mm. But I guess it adds a bit more to the uh, to it's, the overall it's, story. It's, the sto the story it's to show it's. it's to show someone's been here before, right? There's also a floating prop. Is there where what? What? There's, there's there's some stairs on oh, the really? right, oh, and there's a little little bit of railing that's floating about. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, no, no, I can't see it. Oh, on the right, uh, on the right there's hand side. There's just like a board with an arrow. Oh, <gasps> there is. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, oh, so cute. It's it's something to do with the strange environment that we're within. Um, <laughs> it's a um okay, so um, it's just a fun thing. Yeah, it's interesting. So anyway, so and then we go through the portal, and of course we wrap things up with a uh, a, a full return to the beginning, and you realise. Well, we know that. Oh, okay. Well, okay. We we can spend a few minutes with your theories. <laughs> Let's well, hear all we, your we theories. We know more about it now because we found that clipboard. <laughs> so it tells us that Gordon Freeman isn't a very smart person. <laughs> because he, he so far he's always been looping back. And yes. David hasn't. So. I think we're dealing with a superiority complex here. <laughs> so, does that mean that David's died during the process of trying to reach the end? Gordon um, has reached I, I the end, but David died over, before that. Either that, or he figured out how to get out. Ah. Speculation. Very nice. Very interesting. I mean, he, he managed to put his name in the credits, so I, I guess he made it out. <laughs> he came out and built a mod telling the story of the events of, that he'd been through. It took uh, five years to make because he was stuck in that. 
<laughs> this is an autobiography, but he is telling the story of the next person that was going in. Okay. Yeah. So final thoughts, closing out. Overall. It's it's it's, it's good fun mod. It's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be. Didn't say it had to be. This is an argument we had before that that you know, Chris was basically saying. You know, if there's if it compared to a lot of other mods, it's great. You know, and I was like, yes, it yeah. is. It's a great mod. I'm not. I'm not arguing. It's not a great mod. Critical Jim is not about you know mods that aren't great. Critical Jim is about looking at mods that are great and working out what they could do better and mm -hmm. why and what bugged me. And and it's always the way actually. Really bad mods, you kind of let it go. You know, you're like, oh, it's awful anyway. You know, but when you've got a mod. And I had a lot of feedback like this with Daylight, I think, when my first mod that I did, which, you know, a lot of people said, it's good, but you can see it could be, you know what I mean? There's these things that could just be better that would just make it, you know, that mm. much more. So you, you, what I'm saying is, is that you don't, you get a much harder time when you've, you know, you've almost hit the mark and just slightly missed it. As opposed uh. to missing it by a mile. Yeah, but missing it by a mile means there's a lot of room for improvement, and when you're not really, you know, when it, you're just missing it by a bit, you are still in, you know, on good ground. So, if, <laughs> but you know, I mean, I'm, you're also cheating because you're bringing people on to, you know, counter your points, but you're only playing the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, we could go and play something terrible, right? Um, <laughs> but. It would be. It would take us all day to explain why the Citizen Returns is a horrible, horrible mod, mm. and it goes on forever, and it's terrible. And people have suggested it as a mod to cover on here, but I'm not going to oh, waste our time. But we, we we should play Day Hard, man. Day Hard. Remind me. Day Hard. Oh, okay, it's, I'll think about it. Great, great mod. <laughs> okay, I'll play it and let you know. Think. See, I asked <laughs> for suggestions, and you gave me nothing. So now you give me this. Great. Um. Yeah. But so I think we learned a lot. Did we learn a lot? Um. I'm not sure. Did you learn a lot? I think so. I think we got through quite a lot there. I'll try and jot down my, my thoughts and, and my opinions, and obviously I'll be interested to hear other people's. Um, and uh, I'm not quite sure where we're going to capture this. I think Philip's created a space in the Critical Gym page for, for capturing these thoughts and, you know, these things and these rules. So, or not rules. I don't, rules is a hard word. They are, yeah. Thoughts is a, is a good word. Thoughts is a good word. Because um, we're already using that word. Maybe. You don't have to use it. Potential best practice, which is a very business term. Um, but anyway, um, so. Gene manifesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you very much for joining me. Really appreciate it, and your insights are always useful. Um, what are you thank doing you. now? What? What, what are you going to do now? I'm not, I'm not sure. What am I <laughs> doing now? <laughs> I don't know either. It's a very ambiguous question. It is. Um, are you working, you're working on projects at the moment, right? Yeah, um, well, the ones I listed at the start are pretty much what I'm still working on. <laughs> gotcha. Are you a go uh, have you got anything close to completion? or? Um, uh, that, like you mean for mapping? Yeah, or, yeah, or releases or whatever, or, or music. Well, m music wise, things are like that. I, I finish tracks all the time, yeah. but they're the, like. From Earth is still in production, and all that, but it's it's getting closer to what it wants to be. Cool. And um, oh, and David just thanked us. Oh, thank you, David, as well. I'm hoping it wasn't too much of a. <laughs> it was. It was a good game, David. We weren't hard at all. I think we were start out as pretending that the we're going to be terrible, but yeah, I really hope it's I hope it's useful. I can talk about that again. The the thingy because we you didn't find it this time either, but there's a, a little. Um, Secret. sort of clipboard postery thing yes. which shows the island and the sphere around it ah so okay fantastic so it gives you a diagram staircases I think got it oh well maybe I'll need to play it again and that's also a good thing isn't it about repayability and adding all, the, all these little uh, nuggets of, of extra mm -hmm. stuff great stuff yeah. anyway fantastic mod really enjoyed it um, <laughs> room for improvement but still brilliant <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, yeah thanks a lot I think we'll wrap it up but thanks a lot and I hope everybody who's listening had uh, enjoyed it and learned a bit thanks a lot don't forget to subscribe and follow <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that it's not even my channel we're on the Facebook <laughs> <laughs> see you later man bye <laughs>